Francisco Mocha from Void Software. We are partners with uh, the Commission. They invited me to come and deliver this presentation on their behalf uh, and tell you a little bit about what we're doing uh, together uh, in this in this space, um, and specifically using uh, Socket. Um, so, to Commission uh, and, and Void, we started uh, collaborating in March 2018. So a couple of years ago, uh, when we were approached uh, to, to try to, to come up with a technical solution for their project, and we brainstormed together a lot. Uh, we had a period where we were going back and forth with uh, many possibilities. Basically, the condition had developed a novel idea in terms of uh, creating a, a, a new platform uh, for a whole new tokenization ecosystem. Um, but they needed a, a a technical solution that would support their uh, expectations and their projections. Um, now, the briefing is uh, that we intend here to, to create a platform that allows anyone to create, issue, and exchange uh, assets through uh, a fast process. Uh, but unlike what uh, what we see out there in past projects, we want to take it a step further by introducing uh, anti-volatility uh, algorithms. Not anti-volatility, volatility absorption. Uh, algorithm. So we want to make sure that the ecosystem is sustainable and durable. Um, now, when uh, when we assessed the available frameworks to do so, it became uh, very early on clear that uh, Hyperledger Software was a very good candidate for this, uh, as it had a, a, a very interesting mix of, uh, of features that would support these goals. Uh, but also, of course, as at Void, we had some best experience with uh, with the project. I mean, even though it was still in early days and still is in, in, in under intense development, uh, but we still um, believe that it could it could it could provide it with a, quite a few distinctive factors to help us in the future. Uh, and so, gathering the general project requirements that that can become uh, quite clear. So, the first one is scalability. Because even though we're starting in Portugal, that's where we're based, uh, and we're starting uh, at our own uh, national level scale, uh, we did from the start have the expectation of going uh, global uh, quite quickly with the project, uh, which which is happening already. We can say uh, it's already pretty diversified in terms of uh, user adoption in Europe. Um, then, of course, being decentralized, that's uh, paramount to the uh, main uh, idea behind the project. Tokenization cannot truly happen in a Incredible way without a fully decentralized system, uh, and we wanted to ensure full traceability uh, across uh, the, the whole system, uh, as well to meet, be able to meet present and future governance requirements. I mean, we all know that in this place, uh, governance is still uh, pretty much experimental. I mean, we've got we've been over the past year exploring regulatory constraints in many different uh, geographies. You've got uh, Governments looking at uh, tokens as utility assets, others consider it equity assets, others consider them as currency. Portugal just considers uh, any crypto asset as a, as a currency as any other, so any capital gains or losses from those assets are considered the same as, as what you get in the forex market. It's, it's still, I mean, here in the US it's something else. One thing that we wanted, that we didn't know, is we wanted to make sure that we are future-proof as much as we can to meet any, any upcoming uh, uh, requirements like that. So that, that's why basically sought to seem to us as a, as a good candidate, but it also had uh, you know, two external potential advantages. One is becoming a contributor to, to a project or having a, an example of a, a, workable, a working project based on something and being one of the first to do so. I mean, there are benefits from that, risks as well. The risk uh, normally arising from using something that's still pretty, pretty early, early on, is still in development. Uh, but we want to take that risk and help push the, the project further. And uh, well, uh, there's another expectation that we have is that the, the, the modular approach to the consensus algorithms that uh, sought to promote uh, might help us uh, quantum proof our, our consensus in the future. I mean, we don't know what's going to happen in a post quantum uh, universe, what, what exactly will, will be the reality there. But having swappable consistent modules might give us at least a fighting chance of, uh, of you know, adopting whatever uh, response we get in the future uh, to that challenge. Um, now, I wouldn't say that these other are minor uh, features of, of Sutton, but uh, uh, they were, uh, for us, they also were part of that initial 
uh, decision making process, the fact that it's agnostic, agnostic to the, the processing language used in the in transaction processors, in terms of, uh, of the team that we have to build out, of uh, the skills that we have to have in house uh, to, to be in the future be able to support the many requirements of the project that becomes relevant. Uh, and the fact that it promotes separation between network and application layers is for us as a custom software development company that's always been pretty much following the, the three tier software development pattern. Uh, this resonates with us that, that we have this kind of, of separation, make sure that we uh, deal with the business, business logic in a, as, as independent as possible manner as we deal with uh, data or presentation. Um, last but not least, um, the promise uh, behind SAW2 that uh, we can leverage trusted and execution environments to allow off-ledger transactions to occur without breaking the rules that we set up in the transaction processors is pretty appealing. I mean, again, uh, this has its own challenges. I mean, this does mean using certain specific hardware. Uh, it does reduce the, the, the number of possibilities we have right now uh, in that respect. Um, but again, we are also very keen on pushing this forward on supporting uh, core developers, trying to work with them, give, give them feedback, uh, to try to, to promote this technology as much as possible and make it a usable work in reality in the future. Um, so. Being here at the Apology Forum, probably most, most of you know the, the, the key features behind SOTU. I'm listing it out here just uh, for, for reference, uh, but uh, we know that uh, uh, it's peer to peer network, it has a distributed log, uh, so the separation of layers I have mentioned before, uh, and so on. But uh, mainly, it has this uh, the, the, the SOTU talks show this, uh, this sentence, which I think pretty much uh, resumes it in a nutshell. We tend to keep distributed ledgers distributed and making smart contracts safe. Now you might say that the saying that keeping distributed ledgers distributed is a redundancy. It's, it's pretty, it sounds pretty redundant, uh, but in practice, it's, it's the we, we like to remind ourselves of that every now and again because whenever you start building uh, additional logic or more complex logic on top of a blockchain, um, there will be t certain temptations coming up, especially from product builders who are just focusing on, on what the end product should be start coming up with rules that really don't work in a fully decentralized world. So we keep reminding ourselves that uh, to be fully decentralized, really, you don't have a, one central body of governance. You always have to think in a, in a decentralized fashion. So that's kind of a big reminder. One of those things you put up on the wall uh, so that uh, everyone remembers it you know, throughout project development. Uh, now, there are, of course, a number of challenges uh, that, uh, that we have to face. Um, now, the, the fact that uh, the, the consensus logic mechanisms can be swapped on the fly, it's, that's not something that's fully working on software. We know that there's a number of, uh, of encumbrances still. It's not something that's so easily done. It's more easily said than done. Uh, but uh, it's a uh, work in progress. And the, the fact is that right now we don't need to be swapping consensus all the time. It's, uh, it's just something that we need to be there in the future. Um, so it's, it's easily dealt with at the moment. Uh, now, network deployment and management is on itself uh, a challenge. In the previous talk, for those of you who were here, also uh, talked a, a bit about that. And uh, of course, uh, it's ever more relevant uh, that as the network grows, it becomes more complex to manage, and you have to take care of uh, about security, stability, and so on. Uh, in that respect, we're also collaborating with uh, the blockchain technology partners. They'll be here in the afternoon at two thirty, also delivering a talk. It should be pretty interesting because um, basically they're providing a system based on Kubernetes for, for managed, distributed management of, of nodes. Uh, and of course, with that, that entails uh, its own challenges in, in management of peers. We're right now we're using PPFT consensus. We were very keen on using uh, Poet, Proof of Labs Time. It was supposed to be also one of the, the big add-ons uh, from SOTU. It's not fully operational at the moment. We have to stick with PBFT and hopefully uh, change it in, in the future. Um, but but that also brings its own challenges because PBFT kind of requires it. We have uh, a known list of members, a static list of members beforehand. So managing that static peering uh, needs configuration reconf reconfiguration frequently. Uh, so also challenges that we're dealing on a day to day basis. And for now, for the current size of the network, we can uh, certainly deal with it. Uh, we just need to be prepared for the future as we grow more. Uh, and of course. Uh, Working in this rapidly changing environment of a project that's not the most mature, we all know that Fabric is way more mature than such within the Apple Ledger uh, uh, umbrella. Um, that, that brings about its own uh, challenges. 
Um, through all this, we're still trying to be innovative uh, while steering clear of centralization. We're still trying to bring here a lot of the business logic that Token Nation has created and makes it sets it apart from other projects in this space. Uh, as an example, and this is. Uh, just one, one of the examples that I can talk about, a lot of the, of the other algorithms and the other rules behind token nation are still under NDA, they'll be released in the bulletin in a couple of months in the white paper. Uh, but this is a, a small bit example of something that, that's uh, central in the, in the platform. We are able to recover tokens in case of uh, loss of, uh, of private keys or in case uh, the holder decides that those tokens belong to someone who's, for example, under age and they'll uh, receive them once they, they, they enter into adulthood. So basically what we have is uh, mechanisms that will send those tokens after a preset period of time defined by the holder. So one year, three years, five years after that time elapses, those, those, if those assets are touched or moved, they will be distributed by default to the community if there's no other claim for them, or to another predefined wallet according to KYC, a KYC process that also is uh, pre mandatory beforehand so that that, that can happen. Um, this, uh, this on its own, uh, being a relatively simple implementation is innovative enough that so far we haven't found that, uh, that many people that have done it before, so it means working very closely together with the community to, to make it a, a reality. In terms of the project itself, just to give an overview of, of what we're trying to achieve, so uh, the um, main, two main project revenue sources here are uh, tokenize it and, and savings coins. So, tokenize is the platform for the till and made and low cost tokenization of assets, be it uh, companies, ideas, uh, whatever, because but we, will, we do have a process to help you uh, come to this space. And savings coin is the underlying utility token that is your long-term savings uh, uh, investment uh, that supports the whole, uh, the, the whole framework and the whole system. It's, so it's basically a crypto savings uh, that follows those uh, volatility absorption rules um, to make sure that uh, as you hold your tokens, you're supporting the network, getting dividends from it, um, but in basically having your, your pension fund uh, on the blockchain. Uh, then we have uh, token storage and management, so our, our own wallet, uh, and the number of utilities for the many different applications that we currently have in the roadmap and that will appear uh, in the future. Um, Special uh, mention here to the exchange, this decentralized exchange that we're developing. Uh, one of the innovations here as well is to have the full order book on chain. Um, this, we believe, is another big step in meeting regulatory uh, compliance requirements in the future. Um, as more and more, and I've, I've, I've just uh, last week was reading through this report from the New York, New York, lawyer, New York Lawyers Bar to the government uh, regarding an opinion on cryptos. Uh, because the IRS has, has launched quite a few number of uh, guidelines regarding uh, cryptos. And, and one of the key uh, areas of conflict and of, of questioning there is how to assess the value of your crypto assets uh, in terms of revenue tax. Uh, now, the, the suggestions from the bar are that, uh, that you should take the average value in the exchange when the asset was traded. Uh, but we all know that that's uh, kind of murky ground there. I mean, the, it depends on which exchange it is. I mean, it's a it, and most issues out there are centralized, so we believe this is one of the solutions for that. that if we have the full order book already on chain, we kind of get rid of, the, of that uh, doubt there and make it even more transparent. Um, so, basically, uh, uh, savings coin we believe is, uh, is uh, represents a new era for uh, savings and uh, based on crypto assets. Uh, and uh, the any other token that's launched. On token nation benefits from the same uh, uh, algorithms. Uh, we kind of list them out here uh, for reference, uh, but we, we truly believe that this minimization of volatility uh, can represent a, a, an absolutely new era for cryptos, even if it's not uh, um, right now the, the first projects in token nation. Eventually, we, we believe this is the way uh, uh, that things tend to evolve, and this can only be made a reality. Uh, through uh, frameworks like Hyperledger, Sotu, uh, open source, um, enterprise grade ready, um, and that to provide the reliability and credibility that a project like this needs. Uh, my time is up now, so if you have any questions, feel free, but we'll, we also have a booth in the sponsor launch. Uh, we'll be there to answer any, any questions that you have, uh, any details, provide additional information, we're very, very happy to do so. 
and you know, thanks a lot for, for coming and uh, for being brave enough to, to weather it out and uh, face the risk, of, uh, all the risks that we are subject to these days, uh, and being here. Thanks very much.